This evening, President Ali demolishes an elderly home in her setting, promises new one. A Barbies couple arrested for catfishing a U.S.-based Guyanese man out of $1,200. U.S. Ghana making strides in HIV-AIDS treatment, Dr. Anthony. In the region, Haiti, thousands displaced as humanitarian crisis worsens and internationally, China COVID-19 restrictions. Protest turns violent in Guangzhou. Welcome to another broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Updates. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali, early this morning, turned up at her selling in East Bank of Demerara with heavy duty boots and armed with demolition tools to demolish the home of an elderly woman, which he promised to renovate at no cost to her. We started this morning. As I said, that I, I intend to be physically and personally involved and thank all uh, the members of Men on Mission here. And what we are hoping to achieve is to complete the structure by next Friday, right. a new structure uh, so that the granny can get back into her home before uh, uh, next weekend. The president, during a walkabout in the Hurstelling area over the weekend, accompanied by Commissioner of Police Clifton Hicken, made a commitment to having the woman's home rebuilt. The president said he wants this endeavor to be taken to every community by the Men on a Mission team. These are some of the things that in every community we want men to uh, gather their effort and come together in helping others, creating positive impact, not only on the social side, but also in relation to uplifting lives of people. The president did not disappoint as he turned up at 6 a.m. this morning with his team, Commissioner of Police, Hicken, Divisional Commander, Minister Vikram Bharat, and several other persons who are part of the president's Menona Mission Initiative. One of the volunteers on the mission this morning shared his view on the initiative. This is a great gesture for the, for the old lady so that at least by Christmas she could have a proper home and eat some nice pepper pot and, and, and so on. So I think it's a great initiative and like they say, we're going to go around to different communities and of course, we, myself and our team, we're going to keep giving a, a helping hand to whoever that's in them. A Barbies couple has been arrested for scamming a Guyanese man Dasrat Bisoon, who resides in Richmond Hill, New York, of over 1200 US dollars while using the photo of a kitty woman that claimed to know nothing about the transaction. The couple has been identified as Shereza Hitnarine and Mahesh Inshanali, both from New Amsterdam Barbies. The couple had since admitted to using the fake profile with the name Princess Amrita to defraud the man of the entirety. Besun said he was contacted on Facebook by the profile Princess Amrita with an uploaded profile picture. Besun claimed that since October, he and the woman had communicated online and had video chatted on several occasions. The woman reportedly led the man to believe she wanted to be his girlfriend. She then told Bisoon she would be visiting the U.S. in December and requested him to send her money to show immigration on her arrival. He sent her 1200 U.S. in total in three parts. However, after Hitnerine received the money, she blocked Bisoon. The story was circulated on social media. The woman, whose photo was uploaded to the Facebook profile, reported the matter to the police and an investigation was launched. After searching for several days, the police found Hitlerine and her husband. The two will face charges soon. Stick around after the break. Ghana making strides in HIV AIDS treatment, Dr. Anthony, and track and field coach under investigation for allegedly sexually assaulting a minor. Shop at John Lewis Styles in December, and you could win one Amazon Echo Show every day. Yes, every day. 
And that's not all. Four persons will win half a million dollars to spend in the store. Just imagine half a million dollars to spend on clothing, footwear, watches, fragrances, handbags, luggage, and accessories. So shop now at John Lewis Styles to win one Amazon Echo Show every day and half a million dollars to spend in the store. John Lewis Styles Simply Different. Give your home or office some shine. Fortune Investment Company. We provide reliable, commercial and residential, professional cleaning services in Guyana. We clean homes and commercial offices. Other services offered are floor care and tile polishing, interior auto detailing services, power washing, weeding and cleaning, and carpet, couch, and mattress cleaning. We are committed to keeping your homes and offices squeaky clean. Call us now at 592-689-7558 or 592 592- 2639-6365 or visit us at 3430 Jackson North Rumville, Georgetown, Guyana. Fortune Investment Company. When we say clean, we mean spotless. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Good girl forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those soldiers. I was dancing and I fall and fractured my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Welcome back. As Ghana joins the world in observance of World AIDS Day today, Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony said the country is making significant strides in combating this disease. World AIDS Day, designated on December 1st every year since 1988, is an international day dedicated to raising awareness to the AIDS pandemic caused by the spread of HIV infections and mourning to those who have died of the disease. Minister Anthony noted that among the new measures is the introduction of pre-exposed prophylaxis, commonly called PrEP, which is now available for everyone who may need it. So two years ago, PrEP was only um, used in discordant couples, meaning that if a couple together, one of them HIV positive, the other one is not, then they would have um, give PrEP to the person who is not infected. So, but we have changed that because the WHO recommendation now is for any person who perceive themselves to be at risk for HIV can access uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis. The World Health Organization has now recommended that anyone who perceives themselves to be at risk for HIV can have access to the drug. However, there are some minor requirements to access in this based on the person's medical background in relation to certain other diseases and medication that they may be currently taking. Self-testing for HIV is also a new initiative that has made it easier for persons in Guyana to know their HIV status. Self-testing, you can do that at home. You get the kit, you do that at home, so you are aware of what your test shows, whether it's positive or negative. If it's positive, then you can come in, uh, verify it at one of our testing sites, and get linked to getting treatment. Because if it's positive, we we'll want to put you on treatment as quickly as possible. So that self-testing is something new that we have introduced. Minister Anthony noted that while more people are opting for self-testing, there are now 30 voluntary counseling and testing sites available in Guyana. These also cater for other sexually transmitted infections. The ministry is hosting an international HIV STI conference on the 4th of December at the Arthur Chung Convention Center, where persons can learn more about the treatment options available.
The event will also see the launch of publications of clinical guidelines for clinicians to adopt, among other features. This year, World AIDS Day is being observed under the theme Equalize. A national coach was on Wednesday arrested for allegedly sexually assaulting a 14-year-old girl at Lenora Track and Field Center, West Coast Demerara, on Friday, November 25th. The coach was arrested at the sports facility while the national school track and field championships were ongoing. According to reports, a police investigation was opened following a complaint of a sexual assault involving the coach. The victim, an athlete, stated that after she completed practicing at the track and field center, the coach reportedly lured her into a room at the facility where she was subsequently sexually assaulted. Following the incident, the victim reportedly confided in her friend who contacted a welfare officer. The officer informed the victim's parents and reported the matter to the police. Inquiries revealed that an examination was conducted on the young lady, which confirmed the incident. This led to the arrest of the national coach. Further investigations are ongoing. Don't go away after the break. Deadly landslide engulfs motorway in Brazil and China COVID-19 restrictions. Protests turn violent in Gongzhou. Meizu Fonsua is the chocolate paradise of Guyana. From the moment you enter our stores, you are welcomed by the sweet aroma of Belgian chocolate pastries and other artisanal treats handmade by our European trained chef. However, Maison François is more than just chocolate. We serve lunch, dinner, afternoon tea and even Sunday morning mimosa brunch. Our convenient location at 133 Thomas Street Kitty makes it the perfect place to take that special someone or to take home a little sweetness. Treat yourself with the taste of Paris in the heart of Georgetown, only at Maison Francois. When you need money and you've got to get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231 7878 and 223-8955. Sooner or later you will have another power failure. Are you prepared for the next blackout? Some essential equipment such as security cameras, lights, internet, gate motors, and water pumps may stop working. How can you prevent the next blackout? InverterTech has an affordable solution for you. A strong UPS system which uses the latest inverter and solar battery technology to prevent blackout. We smartly calculate your average power demand so you don't spend more than you need to. Call 223-2233 for more information. Shop at John Lewis Styles in December, and you could win one Amazon Echo Show every day. Yes, every day. And that's not all. Four persons will win half a million dollars to spend in the store. Just imagine half a million dollars to spend on clothing, footwear, watches, fragrances, handbags, luggage, and accessories. So shop now at John Lewis Styles to win one Amazon Echo Show every day and half a million dollars to spend in the store. John Lewis Styles, simply different. Hey, hey, this is your fancy vehicle and car is your house? Yes, this is my vehicle and actually I'm waiting on my land. I'm actually renting this house for $50,000. $50,000? You help more? You crazy? You mad? You help me good? Why get the pile? Look, let me show you the light. Come with me. Come on down to Fabulous Homes today. Pay $50,000 every month for 36 months or until you reach 50% of your house costs. Move in after 75% of the cost has been paid. This is wonderful. Let's go. Sign me up. All right, let me go and dash away your landlord. Ah. To explore our home ownership program, check our Facebook page for more information or come down to our office at Avalon Friendship. Hey, Chinese, thanks, man. Thanks a lot, man. You got to look. Yes. yes. Uh, Call us at 227-1380 or 615-8740. 
Fabulous Homes International Realty, changing tenants into homeowners. At Fabulous Homes, we bring your dreams to life. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. A landslide on a motorway in southern Brazil has killed at least two people and left dozens missing. A torrent of mud fell on the BR-376 highway in the state of Parana, hitting more than 21 vehicles, authorities said. Rescue workers at the scene said bad weather and the remote location were complicating the search efforts. Firefighters are using a thermal camera to locate possible survivors. Up to 30 people are thought to still be missing. More than a year has passed since the assassination of Haitian President Jovenel Moïse and his country still has not filled the power vacuum. Gang violence is escalating nationwide with kidnappings and confrontations with police taking place every day, Al Jazeera's Pru Luran reports. In Port-au-Prince, they shield their eyes from the beating sun, but it is not the sun that comes for them. Gladys holds up her hands, demonstrating what she had to do to save her life. This but one corner of the capital, but its crowded yard tells of a nation's turmoil. An outpouring of anger, frustration, fear. Almost half Haiti's population of 11 million people faces acute hunger. We haven't eaten since yesterday. We have nothing to drink. We are suffering. Even our voice is gone. Louis's wife and a child killed. Others made quiet by their loss. 96,000 people displaced by gangs in the capital alone. These people have been displaced not once but twice. First they fled gang violence in Cité du Soleil, perhaps the most dangerous part of Port-au-Prince. They fled to a square opposite the airport and then what happened is the authorities chased them out. So they came here to the city authorities hoping to get something. What they get is a piece of paper. Some jostle with their papers, angry, neither food nor shelter has been forthcoming. Others hand me this single document which attests that somewhere they did belong before the gang struck. They started shooting. We had to jump in the ravine. There was a lot of us. We had to run and hide, lay down and wait for the right time to come out so we could leave. Then they walked to the capital's Hugo Chavez Square. 3,000 displaced residents from the neighborhood of Cité Soleil, where the United Nations assesses 19,000 people face catastrophic hunger. They camped on the square's concrete. I don't know when was the last time I had a proper meal, because we've been living at the camp, sleeping on the ground. At night, it's freezing cold. When it rained, it rained on us. That was until authorities surrounded the square with a brand new fence and tossed them out in a matter of hours. I ask where they will sleep tonight. In the street, in the street. We have nowhere to go to sleep. The local administrator says the numbers seeking aid here have swelled because locals who aren't from City of Soleil saw an opportunity for a handout. A young man's stare provides evidence of its own in this city where up to 200 gangs are fighting for territory, leaving displaced citizens with nothing more than a scrap of paper to call their own. Pruluan Al Jazeera, Port-au-Prince. Two major cities in China have eased COVID-19 restrictions. It comes the day after a violent protest as frustration mounts against the government's strict zero COVID policy. Al Jazeera's Patrick Fook reports from Hong Kong. <laughs> Protests are taking a violent turn in the southern city of Guangzhou. In one video posted on social media, people tear down a COVID-19 testing tent. In another, protesters hurl glass bottles at police officers. Moments later, security forces dressed in hazmat suits advance in formation, holding protective shields. The Reuters and AFP news agencies have verified the videos were filmed in Haiju district, but are unable to confirm when they were taken or the sequence of events. Haiju is where the bulk of China's recent infections have been reported. Much of the area has been under lockdown since October. The unrest marks an escalation in a movement that spread to several large cities from Shanghai and Beijing to Chengdu and Wuhan. I, I would say that uh, uh, the Communist Party actually underestimated the anger at the grassroots level. I, 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 I would not think they are uh, well prepared for a protest uh, occurring over the past weekend. 
The latest developments come despite stern warnings against taking part in demonstrations. In a statement, China's top security agency has called for a crackdown on what it says are hostile forces. It's not clear who or what the government is referring to and has yet to provide evidence of any external interference. It's also reiterated confidence in its approach to the virus. Facts over the years have fully proven that China's COVID protocols have protected the security and health of the Chinese people to the greatest extent and minimized impact on socio-economic development. Some countries have made remarks on China recently. These nations have enough issues to deal with at home. We hope they would heed the voices and interests of their own people instead of pointing fingers at others. Meanwhile, authorities have begun easing restrictions in some areas, including Zhengzhou, home to the biggest iPhone factory in China, reduced mass testing requirements and allowed more businesses to reopen. Still, demonstrators fear possible retribution. In Beijing, some people have voiced support for the protesters. I can still work from home, so the lockdown hasn't affected me too much. But seeing them fighting for freedom, I think, is very inspiring. Anger about the zero COVID policy has morphed with people speaking out against censorship and what they say is an overbearing government. Patrick Falk, Al Jazeera, Hong Kong. And that is it for today's regional and international news. Here now is your three different forecast. That is all for this edition of Channel 2's Headline News Updates. Tune in on Friday at 5.30 p.m. for another episode. Be sure to subscribe, like, and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.